Portuguese. Subpar casting. Man, they're really trying to kill my confidence. Clearly the pattern that I thought I found <laughs> doesn't reload well. The lady that hit us, she's fine. We're fine. We can replace the truck. I mean, just demolish it. Broke the drive line, broke the axle. I mean, demolished the tires. What a freaking mess. It just sucks that it's first derby of the year. Lake Conroe. It is a, a lot tougher than I expected coming into it. Um, like I thought it was gonna be really good fishing. Looking at the schedule, just based off of like the time when we're gonna be here. Water's like mid to upper 50s, which should be really good. It's not, it's tough. Game plan for this week is really just figure out how to get bites. I've only struggled on Conroe. Like, I don't know if I've ever weighed a five fish limit here. And I've fished two tournaments here, so like four or five days. Hasn't been good to me in the past. See if we can't get something going. The weather's changing. Uh, we've had south winds all practice. Last night the wind switched and it's blowing 10 to 20 out of the north. So any clean water you had is most likely dirty and pretty much the whole lake's just dirty now. So it's cold, dirty, um, which is some of your toughest conditions, but that's okay. They still live here. Cool part is any cast here could be a big one. Two, one, go! <laughs> Don't really know if I got a lot going on this week. I got deep fish, shallow fish, mix of everything. So, tis the season. They just need to show up. Ah, oh, what 30 minutes before lines in looks like at Bass Pro Tour. Gotta love an old Trex. Old Trex for life, baby. It's kind of relaxing. Just rocking in the wind. It's nice. Two, one. Lines in. Big one. Stay on there. It's a catfish. Kidding me? Had him hooked in the side. I thought it was a big bass. Dang it. I don't think my fish are liking the wind very much. Let's go get in some calmer water. She ain't go right over there. Great, like, tournament success, a little bit different than some guys. Because even some of the events that I've won, I don't feel like have been my best events. See, so, you know, I may have had a couple, really good couple days and then coasted through. This format, you can't really do that. Um, so if you win, I feel like that's a big statement because you've had to adjust, you know, throughout the event, weights are zeroed, so you can't just get a big lead and kind of coast through that. Um, so I think that's that's kind of the, the big deal, is I'd say these ones, winning, that's success. How much time? I'd like to be able to put one fish in the boat. What's the 20 cut? Gonna run around the corner. Clearly vacated this offshore deal. 
We've got 14 minutes till this period ends and I'd rather just kind of write this period off, get up there, start over, start fresh in the next period. All right, period one is over. Zero bass. Not what we wanted, but we eliminated water. We'll say that, positive note, eliminated water. Um, just moved up one creek. We started down by the boat ramp and just moved up. Um, so we're gonna see what we can make happen up here. I ended my day here yesterday, last day of practice, uh, and caught a five pounder, a three pounder, and really only ran this pattern for about 15, 20 minutes. So we're gonna run with it. Um, hopefully it's good enough that we can just do it the rest of the day. Check back in. Period two starts now. It's your haze. Subpar casting. Man, they're really trying to kill my confidence. Clearly the pattern that I thought I found doesn't reload very well. You gotta be kidding me. Can't catch them if you're getting stuck every cast. There are more crankbaits on the bottom of this lake than anywhere in the country. How to clean up the trash piles in Lake Conroe. Day one. How to use fishing tactics to clean up and dredge the bottom. He choked it too. Little guy, but gosh dang. One pound, nine ounces. We're on the board. Got a lot of work to do. Finally. Finally. That felt so good. Like to do it about 20 more times. I want to go fish some shallow stuff that I got, but the problem is it's on the east bank. So it's just getting pounded with waves. And it's only like a foot deep and it's probably got two footers rolling into it. We may be making a run way up. Might have to just change something, do something different. Water's getting hot and no bass are biting. Except that one. Get in here. That's pretty much every size or every one I caught down this stretch before was that size. All right, make up some ground in a hurry. Like I said, maybe they just pushed in here a little further. They were out, but with that wind, maybe they just pushed back in here. At least we're not like 20 pounds out of it. We're only eight pounds out. Losing it, guys. Looks so good. I'm gonna land him right there where you're at. Come here, come here. Oh, he's stuck in my camera. There goes my GoPro. Uh, lost my GoPro. It's my only hat clip. But we got the bass. But we got the bass. <laughs> Two pounds, 13 ounces. Exactly the same. Okay. 213. It just looped right over it and just went bloop. No! That's the first time in, well, ever, but in the three years that I've been wearing it, like seriously, that it's ever gotten stuck in my line. Yeah, I would rather lose the GoPro than the bass.
Oh, gosh, that was a terrible day. Struggle today. Good news is we at least got a little bit of something to go off of for day two. I just wish we would have came and started running this earlier. But now we know. We now we know for day two. Slow entire day other than the last 25 minutes. I ran all the way to the very other end of the lake and it. caught two 213s. I just needed a reset, like a restart because that first two periods, I felt like I was just like grinding it out and it wasn't happening and I wasn't making those right adjustments and finally just said, I need to do something completely different. Sometimes that's what you gotta do. Sometimes you just have to just completely change things up. Even if you don't go and catch them, it at least restarts your mind and gets you thinking fresh again so that you can make those right decisions. Yeah. Was for me today. Yeah, of course. Because the whole time your head's clouded when you're not catching the fish. Um, you know, you've got all these things and you're trying to decipher through all of these things in your head and figure out which is the right path to take. It was tough on me. Here it comes. Hey, good little man. Yeah, I hope it goes better for you in a couple days. <laughs> Thank you. Day, obviously disappointing where you fell on the score tracker that day. Very slow start today. Yeah, today was. I, I thought that I had a good game plan coming into it. I didn't think the weather would affect it that much. I thought it actually might help my pattern a little bit and it just kind of went away. And I spent the first two periods really not making anything happen, made an adjustment, ran all the way to the other end of the lake and, uh, and was able to get on a little bit of something in the last 25, 30 minutes that I'm gonna be able to run with on Thursday. Turn left onto Alba Road. Here we are off day number one. We fished yesterday, did very poorly job of capturing bass. Uh, as you guys just saw, most likely. Doing a Facebook Live, Skeeter Yamaha. We're gonna make up for it today and just, we're gonna crush this video since we didn't crush the fishing yesterday. Hey everyone, welcome to Major League Fishing Facebook Live. Uh, we are here in Conroe, Texas, fishing Lake Conroe for the Bass Pro Tour Stage 2. Like the water temps are getting warm enough in places for those fish to spawn, but it's like they haven't made that big push to spawn yet. A lot of the fish you catch are still very pale, like they just came up from deeper water, uh, and the water's dirty. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's not normal conditions, uh, but I think we're like right on that cusp of, of really being able to catch them. You go a couple periods and you, you don't, don't catch boat. anything. You get so far behind that you're not getting enough bites to catch back up. And the only way to do that is to go catch a six or seven, eight pounder uh, to jump up. So we learn from it. Um, you know, even though you're not happy with it, I just don't like losing. I hate losing more than I like winning. You fish, eh? Yeah. Houston, we got a problem. What is it? Our main area where we caught the fish the, at the end of the day. Where I had the most confidence, it's gonna blow about 20 to 25 miles an hour straight into it. Challenging, especially when it's so tough to get bit. And I don't know, we may have to still go up there and at least look at it so that you don't have the what ifs. Nobody wants the what ifs. What ifs will kill a man. 8-12, a lot of work to do boys, a lot of work, beautiful spring day over here, birds are chirping, wind's calm, just missing one ingredient, the bass, we just gotta get something going, can't keep, can't keep dropping. Need to be slowly making up ground, not losing it. <laughs> well, events like like Conroe this week are definitely the type of events that nobody really wants to have. I'm completely ready for one to eat it in here. 
just struggle. You just don't feel like you can figure out what is going on. Like I just felt lost out there on day two, trying to trying to make things work and just not putting the pieces together. Gonna have to have an insane round coming up. Surprised there's not fish right here. Stuff looks good. Oh, the infamous dock dog. The arc nemesis of the bass angler. He looks so friendly though. You know those people just let, let them out on purpose. Oh, we got the healer. The healer coming too. Gosh, that one sounds mean. The other ones sound like they're faking it. That healer, he sounds like, uh, like he actually wants to chew my legs off. And period one. Got a lot, a lot, a lot of work to do. Fifth place, Jason Christie, 33 pounds, five ounces. Sixth place, Bobby Lane, 33 pounds. When you're in the moment, it's it's hard to you like step back from that and just kind of think about what you need to do and put your head down. You know, you're you're trying to get bit, and you're all you want to do is just like figure out how to catch them and you almost make it more difficult than what it actually is. It's like, man, I don't really know what to do. It was like I kept searching for something that wasn't actually there. Oh, bass, 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 bass. Where art thou, bass? I was almost trying to create a pattern too much that really wasn't there. Oh, you little sucker. Got two pounder. Felt good to feel a bite though, I can tell you that. Well, we have found ourselves deep down in a dark, dark hole of like 17 pounds to get to the 20 cut. So that's a lot considering I caught seven pounds yesterday and uh, I've caught zero bass so far today. And that's not like, oh, you just go catch 17 pounds, three ounces, you make it. That's, you have to go catch 17 pounds, three ounces, plus what everyone else is gonna catch because they're not gonna just quit catching. <sighs> Speechless. And that's the good thing about these events is, you know, obviously nobody wants to have them where you struggle like that, but I feel like you learn a lot more because you're forced into figuring out what you did wrong. I had to come back here again. As long as I shall grab a fresh breath of air, I'd be the happiest man alive. Ditto. Never caught a bass. I've had three bites all day, and I had one of them right over there, and he said, all right, Gerald, fix the count you down. 15 seconds, 14, 13, whack! That was my third bite of the day, and I lost the first one. I lost my first bite. That was about two hours ago. <laughs> You know that Conroe has beaten me multiple times, so just like Florida, we're not best friends. But I did beat Florida last time, so I'm going to figure out Conroe and then revenge when we come back. Yeah, get in the driver's door. A lot of hook close. Get on there, I'll jump. Me, you can do it. Oh, 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 o
<laughs> How was Brandon. it, Brandon? It was good. Tiff said that you guys might need one in the shop. Probably not. We can do it outside. Could you imagine trying to do that on snow? Hey, I With it snow too. on it? Gonna need some Cajun. We got Sabal and Catering cooking out. Same guys that cooked for us last year at Sabine River. And it is delicious. Like I said, you learn. That's all you can do. Just learn from it. Move on to the next one. Because you don't you never know when the next one is gonna be the one that you win. Kinda have a busy off day today dealing with insurance stuff. We're gonna go get a rental truck and all that later today. But do some interviews first thing this morning, about 8.30, so get started and then probably watch some live and do a little learning. All right, well, hey everyone, as promised, I'm here with Brandon Polinick. So we're on the banks here of Lake Conroe. Good morning, Brandon. Yeah, good morning, and um, if you're not letting it pause long enough, the line can't sink below the bank. Okay, well, thanks for your time. You're welcome. This is fun hanging out. Thank you, yeah. appreciate it. All right, have a good. Until next time. Yeah, have a good five week break. Just kidding. You guys wanna get all the details? Put the link in, you guys can go watch it on, on Natalie's page. Uh, get all the, the technical deets on all the baits that we talked about, rods, reels. I gotta grab the boat and take it to the service yard, so. Uh, we're swapping out a prop shaft because I hit a tree yesterday. So like the only issues I ever have are self-inflicted issues. She's got a little little wobble to it. Shouldn't have that little wobble. But as you can see, the prop is fine. Cause it was a soft tree. It was just not soft enough. Thank you for calling State Farm. We have so that one um, did not work because State Farm Insurance booked it through Hertz and Hertz won't allow us to tow. Stop number two. We got us a F-150 towable and uh, now we're in a race. I don't, I don't even know what that guy's name was, uh, but the gentleman at the Spring Valley location. He found us a truck up in Conroe, back where we're staying. And we have to be there by six. How much time do we have? And it's gonna take us 30 minutes. Enterprise. Stop number three. Hats off to Enterprise. They made it happen. Uh, we still gotta deal with State Farm, but we got a vehicle that can tow. So that's all that matters. Hooked us up with a sweet F-150. So we've got this for who knows how long till they fix TS3, but we have a vehicle that can tow the boat. That's all that matters at this point. All right, we're down here with uh, Pond Hoppers Nation and teaching a kid to fish. And we've got a bunch of kids from around the area, uh, but a lot of these kids have never fished and never caught, you know, anything before. Um, so we're getting, trying to get them hooked on fishing, the outdoors. Squishy fish eyeballs. I ate fish eyeballs before. Yeah, that's gross. <laughs> they weren't that bad. I don't recommend that, I mean. Did you catch one yet, Maddie? Did you catch one yet? Not yet? Okay. It's cool to see the smile that even some of these kids that just when they learn how to cast, how excited they are. You know, the first time that they launch that bobber out there, they're smiling and they're excited. And that's what is really cool to see. Push the button, hold it. Look at that. Nailed it. Like there's no feeling like watching a kid that learns how to fish and they smile uh, you know even if they don't catch them it's just cool to be down here and interact with them and if you have a week like I did where I've caught very few fish events like this um, kind of put things back into perspective and realize that it's more important than just catching bass we're doing something bigger here than you know just fishing 
So I'm trying to find a school fish so I can help some of my little buddies out. Yes, 100% scouting. This is not for my own benefit. You're welcome. What was your name? Jax. All right, my name is Brandon. It's good to meet you, Jax. Good luck. Well, that was a good day. Finished up uh, fishing with some little kids. Had fun with my little man, Jax, Maddie. It's just cool to see like how excited those little kids are. Puts life into perspective a little bit and uh, makes the tougher tournaments easier to swallow. So glad we stuck around, did this today. Weather's not the best for fishing and trying to catch a little bluegill and crappie, but it's still fun. Still fun either way. So go finish up some things and then get on the road, head to Toledo Bend. Rock it up. I think it's the fullest it's ever been which is kind of odd because it's just going to be Brandon next week. So if we come back and he's looking a little fluffy, <laughs> we know why. Um, I tried to make it healthy snacks, but I didn't want him to get bored with it. So he just gave me the death glare. Did someone <laughs> just call me puffy? If we come back next, after next week and you're fluffy, it's because he ate all the stuff in the pantry. <laughs> Stay away from the protein cookies, please. <laughs> All right, everybody, that is it for this week on Lake Conroe, finishing up stage two for the Bass Pro Tour. Didn't go the way we wanted to this week on the water, uh, but had some really cool stuff off the water, you know, but make sure you guys like, subscribe, comment. But until next time, Bassmaster Classic is coming up next. We're gonna roll on to Toledo, leave Kyle here at his hotel and uh, We'll see you guys later in Knoxville. See you, dude. Later. Any final words? Failure is only merely a mindset. But as you learn from your failures, you are not failing, but merely bettering yourself for future tournaments. So Conroe, you are not a failure, but just a mere learning lesson for a young boy like myself to grow and blossom into a magnificent angler. Thank you. Young grasshopper, that was cheesy. <laughs>